ఇండో పసిఫిక్ ప్రాంతం నుంచి సవాళ్లు ఎదురవుతున్నాయని వాటిని ఎదుర్కోవడానికి భారత్ జపాన్ దేశాలు సిద్ధంగా ఉన్నాయని జపాన్ మారిటైమ్ సెల్ఫ్ డిఫెన్స్ ఫోర్స్ కమాండర్ రియర్ అడ్మిరల్ తోయిషుకి హిరాటా తెలిపారు తూర్పు నౌకాదళంలో ఐఎన్ఎస్ సహ్యాద్రి యుద్ధ నౌకపై మీడియాతో మాట్లాడుతూ ప్రపంచ స్థూల జాతీయోత్పత్తిలో అరవై శాతం భాగానికి ఇండో పసిఫిక్ ప్రాంతం కీలకంగా ఉందన్నారు వ్యూహాత్మకంగా అత్యంత కీలకమైన ఆ ప్రాంతం నుంచి ఎదురయ్యే సమస్యలను అధిగమించడానికి భారత్ జపాన్ దేశాల మధ్య కొనసాగుతున్న బలమైన సత్సంబంధాలు ఉపయుక్తంగా ఉంటున్నాయని తెలిపారు ఇరు దేశాల నౌకాదళాల సంయుక్త విన్యాసాల్లో భాగంగా విశాఖ హార్బర్ దళ కార్యక్రమాలు ప్రారంభమయ్యాయని తెలిపారు అనంతరం మళ్లీ సముద్ర దశ విన్యాసాలు ప్రారంభమవుతాయని తెలిపారు కార్యక్రమాల్లో భాగంగా ఫైటర్ కంట్రోల్ వ్యవస్థలను ఉపయోగించి కూడా సంయుక్తంగా విన్యాసాలు చేయటం ఇరు దేశాల చరిత్రలో ఇదే ప్రథమమని తెలిపారు minutes uh-huh. Indian Express sir how these uh, joint exercises changing uh, relations uh, strengthening the relations between the two countries a uh, joint exercise cuz uh, first and foremost the military is engaged after and these exercises how they help each other is that each country and each military and each practices from the other country that we can adopt and similarly there are observations quite easy and we are quite natural for us to collaborate because when you see another seafarer time when we were undertaking the sea phase the weather gods were not very kind so we, our rules based order in this region thank you what is the specific as i mentioned in my address earlier in november this year itself we are going to going to participate in that this will be followed by exercise malabar which is also of excise jmex 22 defense force or jmsdf is represented by rear admiral for the benefit of the media members i would briefly introduce the flag officers before commencing the media briefing commander escort flotilla 4 based at kure japan which is one of its fleet admiral hirata a surface national defense academy JMSDF Staff College. During his illustrious career in JMSDF, he had several operational tenures in Warfare Mumbai 
and Royal College of Defence Studies, London. During the officer, his sea commands include those of missile vessel. And his prestigious staff and operational appointments include those as training. Welcome, Rear Admiral Hirata, CCF4, that is Escort Flotilla 4 Commander, and the commanding officers of, INA, of JS Izumo and Takanami, in addition to the commanding officers of the Indian naval ships. Uh, this year, we had GIMEX, which commenced on 11th of September. We had uh, undertaken a rendezvous at sea at about 130 nautical miles west of Andaman and Nicobar Islands. And the exercise is going to be conducted in three phases. The exercise started with a sea phase. Thereafter, we have now come today for the harbor phase. And it will culminate with the sea phase again. What is particularly of note is that uh, normally every multinational exercise starts with the harbor phase, where we discuss and iron out all the issues and thereafter proceed to sea. But since over the years, we have developed such an interaction and interoperability with the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force that we could straight away proceed to see and undertake the sea phase with the harbor phase commencing later. The sea phase has been conducted in all three dimensions. Uh, the period at which we were at sea, we exercised in surface war firing exercises, anti-air firing exercises, anti-submarine exercises. And we have operated in all dimensions. And it gives me immense pleasure to say that our interoperability has reached new heights. For this edition of GMX, we had two JMSGF ships, Izumo and Takanami, and six ships of the Indian Navy will be taking part. They include INS Ayadri, INS Kadmat, INS Kavarati, and in the next phase, we shall have INS Ranvijay. INS Sukanya has been part of this exercise. And we have had the fleet tanker INS Jyoti, which has also undertaken replenishment at sea exercises. After the harbor phase, which has commenced today, during which we shall have subject matter exchanges and professional interactions, we shall proceed to sea and carry out the next phase of the exercise at sea. GMX is now, this is the sixth edition of GMX. That is in 22. This exercise started with a modest beginning in 2012. And this year also happens to be the 10th anniversary of GMX. In addition to this, it gives us great pleasure that this year also happens to be the year when we are commemorating 70 years of establishment of diplomatic relations between India and Japan. I would also like to congratulate JMSDF for completing 70 years. This year happens to be the 70, 70th anniversary of the establishment of the JMSDF. We have been exercising extensively with the JMSDF. This year itself, we had exercised in March during Exercise Milan, during which JS a ship had participated, that is Yudachi. And now we have the other two ships which are participating now. And this shall be followed in November during the IFR when the ships of the Eastern Fleet shall take place in, shall take part in the exercise of Yokosuka. I take this opportunity to wish the very best to our friends from Japan. And I look forward to meaningful interactions. Thank you. I'm a Rear Admiral Hirata. A commander escort flotilla 4, Japan Maritime Service Defense Force. I'm very pleased that JS Izumo and Takanami, first surface unit of Indo Pacific deployment 2022, have an opportunity to visit Vishakapatnam at this time. Warm welcoming and a lot of support for our visit. It is a great honor for me to have this opportunity to speak on board the INS Hadori with Admiral Barra 
Flag Officer, Commanding Eastern Fleet of Indian Navy. I would like to express my heartfelt congratulations to the all of people of India. In addition, this year also marks the 70th anniversary of the establishment of a dip diplomatic relationship between Japan and India as an important milestone in both countries. It is a great honor for us to visit here in Vishakhapatnam in such a memorable year. As a matter of fact, this is my second time to visit in India. My first visit to India was in 2001, more than 20 years ago. At that time, I participated in the International Fleet Review in Mumbai as a member of J.S. Amagiri. In January of 2001, a huge earthquake hit the state of Gujarat, and J.S. Amagiri was loaded with relief supplies and transported them to Mumbai. Hence, Indian Navy remains special to me even after more than 20 years ago. We, the first service unit of Indo-Pacific deployment departed from Japan on June 13, and we participated in multilateral exercise such as the RIMPAC by Hawaii and Guam, and also conducted exercise with other navies in the Pacific region during this deployment. And now, we have arrived at Vishakhapatnam after a three-month deployment. The goal of IPD-22 is to realize a free and open in the Pacific. As you know, various security challenges and destabilizing factors became more tangible and acute, and the international order based on universal values, which was underpinned the peace and the prosperity of the international community, have been greatly tested. The Indo-Pacific region, which occupied 60% of global GDP and 65% of global population, will continue to be at the center of the world economy over the next several decades. On the other hand, there are many countries with massive military power in this region. Their security visions are in variety and there is no framework for regional security cooperation. In addition, there are unilateral attempts to change the status quo by coercive actions without compliance to international rules and order. In addition, global climate change has caused various unexpected impacts to the whole world. Furthermore, with technology development and change of lifestyle, our security issues are expanded not only to conventional domain, but also to new domains, including the outer space and the cyberspace. Under such situation, the international community is facing big challenges. First, there are great nations which unilaterally attempt to change the status quo and expand influence by coercive actions. It is that greatest, largest unstable factor for the region as well as the international community. Second, a huge, large, huge scale disaster is caused by global climate change over the world. In addition, catastrophic earthquake and tsunami are estimated in the Pacific region because there are many major volcanic zones as known, ring of fires. Such a mega disaster will cause a serious crisis of nations' survival, such as water, food, and shelters. Third, the risk for stable use of global commons, such as maritime, space, and cyber domains, which are critical for economic activities, among the international community are increasing due to various uncertain factors. In response to these global challenges in the Pacific region, Japan and India are working together for peace and stability in cooperation with the international community. Japan and India have been working with the international community and the rule-based free and open maritime order. We are sharing the universal value and common, common rules. A free and open in the Pacific, we should maintain and enhance is completely consistent with common interest of international community. Our maritime nations, as a maritime nations, both Japan and India are committed to the security of sea lines of communication in, in the Pacific. The peace of peace and the prosperity of the Indo-Pacific region depends on the free and open maritime order. 
for Japan Maritime Self Defense Force and Indian Navy. This in the Pacific Ocean is a primary area of activities. We. Audio.